Hey, what is up you guys? It's Ariana. Today we are setting up our new 2020 bullet journal. This is the journal that I chose to go with. You can find it at Hobby Lobby in the planner section. And if you go when all the planner things are on sale, you can get it for 50% off, which is what I did. And this one is a bit larger than the typical size. Uh, it's bigger than the one that I used last year. The reason being, I just wanted to have more planning space on each spread. I think the typical bullet journal size is about an A4 or A5 if I'm not mistaken. And this one is closer to but not quite as big as an A3. So to start off, the very first pages I wanted to be just a decorative thing um, and add a quote page because, you know, we have to announce that it is 2020 now and spark a little bit of motivation also. I basically only used one color throughout this entire setup and just stuck with like a neutral theme. And I think overall, I try to keep all of these spreads pretty simple and leave some white space as well. For the quote page, I decided to go with every day is a fresh start because it's such an inspiring thought for me right now. And especially with the new year, I don't know, I always find it exciting to start off a brand new year and just turn the page and have a blank slate again. But also it's a good reminder that each day and each moment is an opportunity to have a fresh start and move towards your goals. So yeah, I really just wanted to have that reminder there at the very front of the journal. So I just used my Tombow dual brush pen in my accent color to do the lettering. And then I decided to add a drop shadow as well to the letters just to give it more dimension. And then for some more pizzazz, I used my gold jelly roll pen to add some highlights to the words fresh start and to put a few more doodles on there. This is seriously like the best gold pen ever. I just love the way that it shines on the page, although you do have to wait for it to dry, otherwise it will smear. Okay, so moving on to the very first productive spread. We are of course doing a future log, or some people will do like a year at a glance. And with the size of this journal, I was actually able to fit all 12 months on one page, so that was exciting. I decided I wanted to do a similar overlay design like I did on the very first page with the 2020. So where I'm drawing the numbers with the Tombow dual brush pen is where I'm going to be overlaying the little mini calendars on top. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I can't seem to do a future log without messing up at least once. And I think in this whole spread, I did maybe three times. Like I wasn't planning to write the names of the months on here. The whole point of having the numbers was to show which month it was. But by the time I was actually doing the spread, I totally brain farted and just went ahead and put January. So, you know, you have to roll with it sometimes. And then next to each mini calendar, I drew some lines with a gray fine liner just so I can write down the important dates. I seriously love using this gray fine liner because you can add lines to give it structure but it's not so harsh like a black line. But yeah, I don't know, I feel like it just really pulls together the whole spread visually. And since my future log only took up one page, next to it I decided to do my 2020 bucket list. I decided this year I didn't want to do just like one big kind of yearly goals page or something like that, but then instead focus on more of like monthly goals. I thought it would be cool to come up with a list of things that I'd been either wanting or meaning to do and then try to accomplish them before the year's over. And I also wanted to document when I actually completed that item. I haven't completely filled out this list yet, but I did add things kind of like exploring and traveling plans, making bread from scratch, <laughs> changing up my hair, finally making my wedding scrapbook two years later. <laughs> Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how much of these I can get done. I might even make like a whole video just kind of dedicated to trying to accomplish all of these things on my bucket list for this year. For sure, let me know in the comments if that'd be something that you'd be interested in seeing. <laughs> um, we could kind of do this journey together. Mm. 
Now this next spread is something that I try to do every year as well and it's reflecting on the previous year and then kind of looking ahead to the next year and mainly focusing on my words of the year. At the end of every year and beginning of the next year, I always like to think and pray and meditate on what word is going to be like a key thing for me that year. Something that really sets the tone or is the vision for that year. Like for 2019, I felt like the word that came to me was constant because I really felt like that year was about pushing ahead and continuing and being faithful with what I'd already started. I did make a whole video where I talk about my thought process with this one. Um, I'll link it in the cards if you want to go see it. But below that, I like to also reflect on things that really worked for that year and things that didn't work. Just as like a little mini overview of the things that I'm really proud of that worked really well throughout the whole year and then other things that I just know need some growth and practice. I think this is a great thing to do even like monthly because it creates that habit to really check in with yourself and really brings awareness to the things that you want to celebrate um, but also the things that you want to improve and how you can actually maybe go about doing that. And then at the bottom I just included a little section for all of my favorite memories of 2019. I feel like it'll be fun to look back on. So now my word for 2020. I do already have a word. Um, I haven't filled out this page yet. So I just left it blank here in the video. I think I'm going to do a whole separate video about my word for 2020 and kind of what it's meaning um, and fill out this page with you guys. So for now, we're just going to leave it a blank page. All right, so moving on, these are going to be my last two spreads of my yearly setup. On the left hand side, I thought I would try out one of these grid spacing cheat sheets that I've seen. This is my first time actually making one of these, but I felt like it would be pretty helpful so that you're not having to count every single time halfway in the page or a quarter down the page or anything like that. The things that you would normally do on a regular basis for like weekly spreads or things like that. So all you would have to do is number each box all the way across the page and then all the way down the page so that you know exactly how many squares you've got in your grid. And then from there you can mark both of your halfway points and then maybe even a quarter point. Really whatever would be things that you would use. I think this can be really personalized to how you normally section off your pages. I mean that's really the essence of what a bullet journal is. It should be something that really works for you. So it's going to be individual for everybody and what things are actually useful to you. Because if you put something in here that you're never going to use, there's, there's no point really. <laughs> But the fun part is trying things out and testing it and just, just playing around in your journal, um, trying out different spreads and things like that. And that's the way that you would actually find, you know, the things that you really like and what really works for you. If you do decide to do one of these grid spacing sheets though, it is key that it's on the left hand side because then when you're flipping back to it, it's going to be much easier to reference and see when it's on the left and then you don't have to flip the entire page over to look at it if it's on the right side. And then I didn't really have anything else, any other spreads that I wanted to do for the year. Um, so I just decided since I had this page here that I would do kind of like a little brain dump. Um, just a section for any notes or things that I just want to remember. So yeah, that's all for my yearly setup for a whole new bullet journal. So now we're going to go ahead and move into the January setup. Again, keeping it really simple and minimal, I kind of went with this little, I guess, post-it type of theme and I just used the same exact accent color and I went with a simple cursive font. So all I did for the cover page was just this little sheet um, and a little monthly calendar and I decided to add little washi tape accents to make it really that post-it type of feel. I believe all the washi tapes that I have are probably from Hobby Lobby or maybe Joann's. They've just kind of been collected over the years. And then on the other side all I did was just another quote that just says there are far better things ahead than any we leave behind. I just felt like that was so fitting for the, the first month of the year. There are so many things ahead and in store of 2020. And now moving on to the calendar spread. It's basically just one big giant post-it that I did uh, to put the calendar in. Just a simple one page calendar. Typically what I use this spread for is all like the main events or appointments that I know I have already ahead of time because with bullet journaling you really just do one week of planning at a time and so this is like the catch-all of all the future appointments and future dates that you have coming up so that whenever you do go to set up your week you can look back at this calendar and know exactly what is going to be happening that week. 
Again, making great use of my gray fine liner, just visually. I just love how it's subtle, but the grid of the calendar is still there, but it just creates the variance between all of the lines. On these types of spreads, I also like to always include a little like running task list of things that I for sure want to get done this month or I need to keep in mind for this month. So I've got that section there at the bottom as well. On the other side of the calendar is where I'm going to be writing out my monthly goals for January and then also I have my habit trackers at the bottom. Normally I do like individual trackers for each habit that I want to work on, but this time I decided to combine it all together in one big chart, but it is split in half still because I want it to fit there at the bottom of the page. So this month I'm working on things like drinking enough water, uh, tracking my workouts, planning to do at least three times a week, um, getting my skincare routine in, doing a little bit of tidying each day, working on my content for YouTube and for Instagram, and then also journaling. Journaling is something that I really want to get into and do as like a daily practice, even if all I did is just throw a couple blurbs on a page and then call it a day. So every day that I complete that item, I will fill in the box next to the day and hopefully by the end of the month, I will have more spots filled in than I'll have blank. <laughs> That's the goal. Now this next spread is very specific to just planning out content and things that I want to post on here for YouTube and for my Instagram. I just really like having a place where I can very specifically and visually plan out when I want to post things. That way I can see what's coming up for each one separately. So I've just got the page split in half with the days of the month going down the middle. And then in case you're wondering at the top what those little arrows are, that's going to be my growth tracker to see where I end up from the beginning to the end of the month. And then I left a little space on the bottom of the right side just so I can have a place to put all the different ideas and different videos that I want to make this month. And then that's it for this spread. I'll have to see how well this works on paper or if it just ends up being extremely messy. I've seen people do planning like this um, digitally and that might be an option for me. We'll have to see depending on how much things change. But for now, I think it's a good way of planning that stuff out and having a visual overview of it. And with that, we're on to the last spread and it is my first weekly spread. It's week one, December 30th through January the 5th. Oh, and I don't think I've ever mentioned, but I usually like to start my weeks on Mondays. So that's kind of why you see my calendars kind of shifted from the normal kind of calendar. I always start it on Mondays just because for me productively, it makes better sense to start it on a Monday and then have the weekend kind of lumped together at the end of the week. Again, that's just personal preference and what works for me. Keeping with the little mini theme, I thought I would add this little sheet of paper that looks like it was ripped out of a spiral notebook and this was going to be my task list of all the things that I need to do this week. Pretty much every weekly spread, I'm always going to have some form of to-do list because it just helps me to mentally dump out all the things that I know I need to get done and then I can actually prioritize and fit them in into time slots that I know on each day that I can do them. And then nothing too special with the days of the week. I just did little flags as the headers. And then to finish off the whole spread, I added another quote at the bottom, added the little washi tape details, and then I had some space. So I thought, why not just add some doodles in here? So I just doodled in these little sprigs of leaves. And that is all. I'll go ahead and do the final flip through of everything. I'm so glad you joined me in setting up my new bullet journal for 2020. That's just awesome to say. I don't know about you, but I love saying 2020. It just sounds great and it's very satisfying. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and found some inspiration. I know I haven't done a bullet journal video in a really long time, um, but with the start of the new year, I thought I would jump in and make another one because I really do enjoy it. I'm wondering if I should do these setups every month. Um, you guys can let me know in the comments if that's something that you'd like to see. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up because it really helps my channel and subscribe if you haven't already. But yeah, happy new year to you all and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!